like you know, otherwise. So, hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation about the VR speech trainer. So, public speaking is quite a common thing that all of us have to do at some point in our lives, and it's quite an important skill to have. The thing is that many people despise doing it. We, there are quite a lot of ways to practice for this. Some people like to practice on a mirror. A mirror. Some people like to practice on a stuffed toy. So it really depends. But the thing is that nothing beats the real deal, as people say. But you can't necessarily get the real practice before the actual thing. So not all of us have an impromptu card that we can just take out and practice with. So how do we solve this? Well, we solve this by com by using virtual reality to replicate actual <coughs> real-life speaking environments. So what this allows us to do is preserve the, re the real-life details that you would see in an actual speaking environment to m increase immersion and to maximize the presence that we feel that we're in the environment. So, and this also allows us to incorporate some external factors which might influence speaking performance. We'll talk about it more later. And not only that, but using voice recognition, we can provide feedback for self-improvement later on down the line as you go. So this system itself is comprised of multiple components. You can see them on the list right here, up, up, up there. Um, I'll go through them in turn one by one. So environment is a key, very important part of the trainer. As you can see, if I, when I look around or when you look around, it is quite based upon the Monash University as lecture theaters, but it's scaled down for performance reasons. So it's about 60 seats or so compared to 120 seats. Um, the environment was hand modeled and texture using Autodesk Maya. Mikolai was the one that was in charge of that. And all of the supplementary color that you see, such as the exit signs, you can't really see in the dark, but there's some fire extinguisher signs and all of that. All those were photographed using a cam scanner app and imported manually. Um, so the reason why we did all this was that authenticity to ensure that this feels like the real thing was super important to ensure immersion of the system and to make it super convincing. Uh, and next we have the presentation tools. This is what I, Ben, mainly did. So these are the things which I have in front of me right now. And these are the core tools that are common in a lot of public speaking environments. So what this lets you do is it lets you import your own slides. But it's very rudimentary right now. We just sort it by alphabetical order. As well as the notes, which you see over here. These are in a text file. Quite simple stuff, very basic. Um, the slides appear on the screen right here as well as the big projector up here, um, as well as the notes appear on this cue card right in front of me. All this interactivity was accomplished using VRTK and Steam VR, which is quite simple to do. Now we have the distraction system. So throughout this time, you might have been noticing a few people falling asleep. That's a bit of calibration issue right there. But the, the entire idea behind this is that there are certain events that happen that might influence the user's performance while speaking. And we wanted to replicate these themes in the environment. So the distractions as of now are kind of comprised in the two sections. There are the ambient distractions and, and the preactive distractions. And these come in two forms. One is animations. As you can see, the crowd is currently animating, as well as audio. So if you can hear some coughing and all that, that's what that is. So the thing about ambient distractions is that they are classified as the ones which always happen, no matter what, no matter how good you're doing. Whereas the reactive distractions are stuff that's based off your performance. So how are well you doing? The crowd might react to that. And the reactive distractions take into account multiple factors, which I will explain later on. So now we have the audience that's right in front of us, or right in front of me, sorry. So while the environment is important, it's also important to have a crowd because having that pair of eyes, even though they might be a bit fake, it's important to instill some sense of pressure into the speaker to once again emulate that experience. So the character models that you see in front of me, um, they're generated using Fuse, the free version that's on Steam, not the one that's owned by Adobe now. And they're rigged using Mixamo, which flows quite easily between the two programs. The animations were done by hand. We initially tried using a Connect 
but Jay had some issues getting it working, so he ended up having to do it all by hand, unfortunately. So they're very rudimentary for now, but given more time, they could be even better. Um, and obviously, he's a part of the distraction system. So Ambien is the coughing. There's some idle animations that that you can kind of see with this lady in front of me, for instance. There's also the reactive ones, like sometimes they might fall asleep. <laughs> they really shouldn't be, but... Mm. And then we have the audio. So as you can hear, there's some coughing going on. Mainly coughing because that's the easiest one to pick up. So sounds are a key characteristic of any environment, so we do have to emulate that as well. They are recorded using about a $100 USB microphone, so it's decent, but it's not the best in the world. It's not studio quality. Um, and they've been cleaned up using Audacity. So the way that we did it was we went to a lecture theater and we just did these sounds. Um, Jay and I, myself, Ben, were the ones that make the sounds. And Mikolai was the one that recorded them and cleaned them up using Audacity. And these are also part of the distraction system. So yep, so the ambient one would be some white noise, some coughing, as you can hear. The reactive one, there would have been whis whispering, but I don't think we actually... Actually, yeah, there is whispering, but only if you do quite badly, so to speak, which I'm hopefully not at the moment. And next is voice recognition. So as I'm talking right now, um, my voice is being recognized and being transcribed and so forth. And we wanted to take advantage of the microphone that's on my HMD in order to kind of evaluate the user, give them feedback. And this is done using um, IBM Watson, the SDK for Unity. And it's quite a, it's quite powerful, and it easily seamlessly blends in. We do keep track of multiple values, such as the transcript, the words per minute, and the hesitation count. So if I just give you a demo, if I were to stop the speech as of now, on the that instance, I'll get this printer that shows me information of my speech. I'm just going to this it up again because we want to keep going. Um, but as you can see, oh, it's a bit buggy. But as you can see, on this we have some some information, such as um, the words that we use, the words per minute, the, has, the number of hesitations like ums and ahs that I have, how long it takes, as well as the number. <gasps> as well as I believe, um, yeah, however many times I looked at the crowd versus the notes versus my my slides. So all that's well and good. <clears throat> Gotta use my clicker. Yep, and this is the eval performance, performance evaluation that I was talking about. So the nice thing about this is that we, even though we display it on the screen, we also have this printout and that's why the printer is there. The idea behind this is that say if I were to conclude a speech, start another one, and conclude that one. If it's the same speech, I'll be given another handout. There are two separate objects. And this lets me, this lets me somewhat compare between the two. So if I go, okay, my speech is getting longer over time, I need to speed up, or I'm umming and ahhing a lot, so I need to think through my words and so forth and so forth. So it's a good way of keeping track of that. That we do also keep some do some evaluation mid speech. This is very very simple at the moment because it's meant to just support other interactions, mainly the distraction stuff. Um, so we do keep track of four metrics: so it's word per minute, hesitation percentage, audience engagement, also known as how often you look at the audience versus everything else, as well as the movement. So if I'm moving a lot, if I'm kind of standing still and doing nothing, it's not that interesting. But if I'm moving a lot, kind of keeping the audience engaged, then that's considered better. Let me get my clicker. Okay, so talking through all that, time to talk through some limitations. So these are a few, but these are the most important ones. So first of all, the transcript from IBM Watson isn't perfect. Like it, it gets the job done most of the time, but depending on how the person speaks, if you have the really thick accent, then it might not work that great. Um, uh, so another thing that we really wanted to do was to amplify the user's voice. So you right now you're hearing it from the HTC Vive's microphone that I have, and I apologize, the audio recording is quite bad. But we did want to play back the sound onto some in-game speakers to emulate the feeling of talking into a microphone that not many people are used to. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that because it conflicts with the way that Watson works in terms of using the microphone. As well as a big limitation is that the animations are not comprehensive because we couldn't use the connect, which means it had to be hand animated, which meant that 
however many we were to get in was just purely t time dependent as it's quite tedious to do so. Future work, well, do we have a long list here? But once again, these are the big ones. So what we want to do is, well, one idea, sorry, is to take these sheets and be able to export them to PDF. So because it's one thing to have them in game, but say if I want a whole list of them in a folder somewhere that I can keep track of, that's that would be quite handy. The next one is to have multiple environments and be able to select between them. So right now, this is lecture theater, which is quite good for people like us, like uni students or tutors or even lecturers. Those people would be quite appreciative of this. But this environment is kind of useless for other types of people, like business people, for instance. They're not going to be speaking in such an environment. Well, for the most part. Um, there was also another idea that we had, was, which was called nightmare distractions. So when I talked about the ambient and reactive distractions, this is a third tier beyond that, where these are the, the big serious parts where you might be a bit frazzled by. So say, imagine your slides not working or your cue cards being out of order, or maybe even the fire alarm goes off. We didn't do that because it's quite a lot of work. There's a lot of interlocking systems, such as the animations have to make sense. And how do you resolve it when we don't have an in-game computer that's simulated? But it is one idea. Another thing is advanced audio audience interaction, um, animations and interaction. So as of now, like I mentioned earlier, some people might leave the room. Everyone is just kind of sitting there. No one moves, no one shuffles or anything. No one has any laptops out, no one uses their phone. So being able to extend beyond that, add all that in would be super cool and make it even more realistic. Another thing we wanted to do was change the audience demographic. So all these models right now, as you see, are generated in Fuse. And they were handpicked by Mikolai and I, so we choose and made sure that they were diverse, but it was convincing. But ideally, in the future, we can have some sort of um, parameters that can change the type of audience. So say I want to be speaking in front of business people, or I want to be speaking in front of young teenagers wearing casual clothes, or I want to be speaking in front of old people, something like that. Being able to change the demographic for your presentation would be quite handy. Another thing would be to have a more robust evaluation algorithm. So as I mentioned earlier, we only had four metrics that we were using, and it's very simple. It just gives you a score from one, one a score based on one, two, or three, based on those four yeah. algorithms, it averages them out. So having it be more robust and having it um, make more sense would be quite important. Um, and also another thing would be to give recommendations to improve your speech. So as you see right now, this is all just plain stats. There's not really much actionable items that are given to me straight up before, like without me having to come up with them myself. So having a simple line saying you need to move more or you need to stutter less would be quite handy. Lastly is, and most importantly actually, is a portable Google Cardboard and or mobile version, which will allow you to not only take this on the go, but open the door to a lot more people that otherwise don't have access to VR software or and VR hardware, like a HTC Vive or a Go. Even though they are fairly affordable now, only about a couple hundred dollars for the Oculus, it is still a barrier to entry that a mobile version could definitely solve. It does limit a lot of the interactions, but the environment itself could be quite valuable for those people. And that's about it. Thank you to the fake crowd. For the people watching on YouTube, there's a few other things which I want to show up as well, um, which makes it easier to do in-game. So all the stuff that's in front of me, we do try to make interactable. Oh, so I'm going to turn on the speech again so that the crowd will shut up. But so you can see in front of me how we try to replicate this to look like the lectern that's found in the S theaters, obviously. So you can see, and but this, this printer isn't um, realistic, obviously, but it's a nice, easy way to print out these sheets. You can see this audio visual support that some of you might be familiar with. This monitor is on a hinge that's, as I'm going to break physics, um, the monitor is on a hinge that is movable. The physics is a bit wonky, but you know, for something that took a couple of hours, it's not bad. The problem is that once you pull it away, it starts behaving a bit weird. But one way to fix that is the join. Once it has too much force applied, it breaks. So the screen still works because it's quite, um, it's kind of a funny thing and it's not meant to be actually used, but it's there just in case. Um, oops. 
just in case it does happen. Um, this also is standing disk controls. This is a thing on the lecterns, which I didn't realize until we went to check them. But you can simply click on these and the lectern goes up and down. So just in case you're really, really tall or quite short, you can adjust this based if you're liking. Um, this lever you saw me using quite a bit from earlier. It's not realistic, obviously, but it was the easiest way that we can have some sort of start the speech now trigger. We originally had a voice command where if I say begin speech or end speech, I believe, or stop speech, then it would do it. But this is kind of a more straightforward, direct way. Um, what else? This printer, I can pick it up, move it. It doesn't really matter. It will still print no matter where it is. Um, this fire extinguisher. So this fire, ex where's the point? this fire extinguisher used to be over there against the wall. It's hard to see because the lights are off. It used to be there next to the wall. It's supposed to be maybe for the decoration, but I decided it would be fun to if I actually pick it up correctly. It would be fun to make this usable. Unfortunately, the crowd doesn't care about it. My experience this crowd, they weren't um, they weren't called the cops on me, luckily. But <laughs> it's more, it's meant to be more of an Easter egg. But I, I thought I'd point it out anyway. Um, other than that, the environment is more or less as you see. It was really important to have these lights look as they are. This volumetric lighting effect. This was done using a paid a paid plugin. You can read about it in the um, in the report. But it's super important to make sure that. Um, you have that realistic effect because when you look at a print, at a projector, sorry, if there's no none of this volumetric lighting, it doesn't even look like it's on. But with this effect, it looks quite realistic. So we also do these for the spotlights as well. The spotlights move with me. They're not done in lecture theater, but they were a nice way to solve any potential lighting issues that are around me. And you do kind of see them in TED Talks. So there you go. Um, other than that, in terms of situations over the place, some of you might recognize this. We try to have exit signs. These things, these do have lights on them, point lights, that kind of have a subtle glow onto them, but it's kind of hard to see with the lights on, obviously. Um, other than that, that's something. Oh, I don't want to say that's about it, but that will more or less cover it. Thank you for watching.